referee for this contest is Carlos Padilla. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the black trunks with white letters and weighs an even 173 pounds. He's from Westerville, Ohio. As a professional, 13 victories, only three defeats and two draws. Eight of his 13 victories by KO. Let's hear it for Kemper Morton. opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing the black trunks with white letters and white trim on the legs. He weighed in at an even 175 pounds, fighting out of Laurel, Maryland. Undefeated as a professional, 9-0, and 8 KOs. He's an Olympic gold medal winner from the 1988 Games. The initials are B-A-M and they stand for Boxing Andrew Maynard. Okay, you better already give instructions in your respective dressing room. Don't choose any kinds of foul. Any question? No. Seconds come out fighting. So we go into the corner of Andrew Maynard, and Maynard is going to have to be a little bit more serious, I would think, about the activities tonight. The last time he was a little bit lackadaisical early in the fight, and he got a pretty good test. He uh, ended up winning a decision against Mike DeVito on the undercard of Leonard Duran, and uh, it wasn't a great performance by him. Sugar Ray Leonard in the audience tonight. We'll have an opportunity to chat with him at some point during the season. Looking at him <clears throat> with his light heavyweight charge, hoping that he'll justify all the confidence they have in him. You know, uh, Maynard all, it lately has seemed, and we've talked about this, seemed like he's caught between two styles. He's really essentially a banger in the ring, and yet they want him to be more mobile and box a little more. It's almost like he's caught in between. Kemper Morton took note of that today. He said to me, he said, you know, he said, I think that he's trying to learn a different style, and I think it hurts him. Now, there's the jab by Morton. Remember, we talked about how important that was for each fighter. I think this is a good test for Andrew Maynard. At some point, you just got to step up. Morton's got a couple of good wins to his credit. He beat Keith Vining in 1987. He's not a bad fighter. Had a draw with Jamie Howe, a guy we saw uh, against uh, in Wheeling, West Virginia, against Donnie Lalonde back in the... And I was going to say back in the dark days. It was dark. We had a power outage that night in Wheeling, West Virginia. The lights went out. Donald Curry was doing the fight at ringside with me, broadcasting with me. We were off the air for about 30 minutes. When the lights went out in Wheeling. Yeah. That sounds like a song title. Yeah. yeah. Good work on the inside by Mater. This guy's just prepping for the 10th anniversary where we can tell all these tales. That's know? right. Maynard having a very good first round. Yeah. Nice right hand there. He's really starting to tee off on Morton, who is really being more of a stationary target. You see, now he's got Morton coming at him. I don't think Morton really wants to do that because he likes to counter punch more. That left eye already swollen. Morton had a, a shiner there already. Five punches all got there. Six, seven punches. See, Morton fighting the wrong strategic fight. He wants to be standing straight up and jabbing and boxing Maynard, not standing and inside tasting his power. That's really the Andrew... See, this really is the Andrew Maynard that I think is most effective. You know, you want to make him technically proficient, but here's Andrew Maynard banging away to the body and the head. That's what you want to make him, I, I believe. And missing very few punches. Not that many, yeah. I, I'm not second-guessing their camp. I, I know they want him to increase, improve his skills, but I'll tell you, it, you know, it's like taking Karl Yastrzemski and saying, you know, put that bat a little lower and I think you'll hit better. I don't know. Well, an excellent first round for Andrew Maynard, who has been able to do just about anything he set out to do and kept Kemper Morton virtually at bay. Quince could better demonstrate that first round. There is the uppercut to the body, left hook to the body, and then he finishes with a nice left hook to the head. That was Andrew Maynard on the inside uh, doing some really good work, captured expertly by Dan Lovell, our tape operator in the truck. As always. Second round, Maynard did everything in the first round. 
Now they told Kemper Norton, uh, Morton in between the uh, rounds, and I think it was extremely good advice. Give him more movement and uh, get that jab working, and that's really what he needs to do. Let's take a look at the French profile in the first yeah. round. And as we said, Maynard did everything and dished it out and didn't take it. 106 punches. That's interesting. It didn't seem like he was throwing 106 punches. He threw a lot of combinations there, and they stopped for a little bit, then a lot of combinations. That didn't seem like 106 punches. And his, com his combinations were in bunches of six and seven, yeah. even eight punches. And that's why, even with the downtime, he ends up with a big number. Because we know the numbers are accurate. a good shot by Morton, his best shot of the fight. Kemper Morton does not really want to be in there doing this. He lands a good uppercut, but that's not where he'd be most effective against Maynard. Maynard's trying to get him to come to him, which is a good strategy. Again, Maynard continues to bang Morton virtually at will here. A lot of swelling all over the face of Kemper Morton. See, the jab of Morton is just totally abandoned right now. I mean, that was his game plan, and he's just forgetting. Now he's a whole different fighter. Look, he wanted the counter punch. Instead, he's coming forward. He wanted to jab, and look, there. even when he throws a pinny pad jab like that, it makes the right hand work. There's a, there's a lesson there for Morton. Good stiff jab, and then the right hand. Maynard's been shaking his right hand. I don't know if he heard it. It's I, possible. I think he may have. And there he's digging left hooks. I think that's what's making him be a little lethargic and walking back. He threw the right hand there and got there with it. Maynard fighting the second round on his heels pretty much. And again, you see him shake that yeah. right hand. It's bothering him. I'll tell you what, the, Morton should be able to land that jab. Those hands are so low by Andrew Maynard. Morton isn't even trying to throw that punch. When he does, it gets there. Yeah, you can see, a Maynard's done a wonderful job with that left hook. The right hand is a token now, Barry. You called it, and I think you're absolutely right. Something's wrong with Andrew Maynard's right hand. Oh, yeah. Definitely. You can see it right there. This is when the man becomes the boss out there. You go back this board with your left jab, put hooks to the body, move around with your elbows and stuff. Now this is when you become a true professional out there. Back him up with the jab. Not big hard jab. Yeah. Come on. Too much. Not too much. Big, hard, big hard jab. Back him up. I want you to keep this boy back up. Stop him from back up so much. When you make him miss, I want you to pay up the center on him. Okay? Make him pay up the center. Okay. Okay. Here is Maynard with the left hook in the last round. He's been using that punch a lot. No mention of his hand there, but you get the feeling it's almost unspoken. Andrew, saying this right hand to the body. I've been trying. Do this, do this straight to the body. You don't have to worry about it. Don't, stop, right. hitting him stop hitting him in the hard head. Okay. Breathe good. Yeah. I don't want no more to hit. See, they're saying don't hit him in the hard head because your hand is hurt. So yeah. it's, it's unspoken, but I think the clear indication there is that something's wrong with his hand and he's shaking it. Now, in his last fight, remember, uh, Maynard pulled out of his last fight because of the flu. Supposed to be on the yeah, that's right. So he has some problems there. Now, by now, honestly, Kemper and Morton and his his uh, people ought to be able to figure out that Andrew Maynard is not really doing well with his right hand. Certainly, if we could figure it out. If we could figure it out, <laughs> by golly, they've got to be able to figure it out. I'm telling you. This fight in the light heavyweight division, Andrew Maynard in the black trunks, Kemper Morton in the black trunks, Maynard on the left, now on the right. I heard one of the ring card girls discussing his hand problem as she walked by. That's right. She leaned down and said, you guys got that? The right hand is hurt. I hate when they know more than we do. But now, know it or not, I don't think Kemper Morton is really taking uh, advantage of it. And you know, Morton was really pumped up today. You know, he said this is his big opportunity. He's not fighting like it's his big opportunity right now. No, he's not. But would it be just that Maynard just took all the fight out of him? That round? is possible. But, you know, Morton could go back to what he knew, what he said he was going to do, which is just jab from the outside. He's not throwing that jab. Maynard has been reduced to using the jab almost exclusively. That and the left hook. Nice left uppercut. 
Missed with that right hand. He is throwing the right hand. It's not that he's just sticking it out there. Although that one, he had a shot at him with the right hand, and he really pity patted it. Yeah, I mean, I think he can throw it occasionally really well. His left hook, though, is landing with good power and authority. There's, look at that strong jab by Morton. When he throws that punch, it gets there. Then he needs to follow it with the right hand. But um, Andrew giving him some good movement on the ropes. Andrew Maynard, a guy who is just a good athlete. And interestingly enough, you don't often find that in boxing. Not always, no. Usually well-conditioned, but not always good all-around right. athletes. Yeah. Both landed huge left hooks in there, and they owe oh, tremendous cut around the left eye now of Morton. Yeah, very bad cut. Very bad cut. And that could bring this fight to a premature end. It is the type of cut where blood will get in the eye. And you know, Morton landed a super left hooker. Oh, big right by Maynard. Morton's hurt. And yeah, he is hurt now. That right got him. Morton is in a lot of trouble because the cut is very serious. He's a hurt fighter right now. Maynard trying to finish him. And now Carlos Bedelia will call timeout and ask for the ring position. Stay there, stay there. Maynard. Okay, no, no. Oh, okay. It's over. I, I think that's well stopped. As you can see, that's a, a pretty nasty cut. And in a bad spot. Right over the eye. And as you said, blood would, could get into the eye. So Andrew Maynard, a TKO victory. It'll be interesting to find out what the story on his right hand is. And we'll have a chance to ask him about that. He's certainly Maynard happy to see this fight end if, in fact, his right hand is bothering him because he didn't need to, to continue to throw it and injure it worse, perhaps. See a right hand here. Here's Maynard had it. That's the one you talked about. Had a perfect shot at him and just kind of cuffed him with it because then once he was in motion, he was afraid he was going to hit him on the top of the head and he said, uh-oh, I better not. Uh, and so he didn't follow through. Maynard threw 138 punches in round three, the punch profile tells us. And you can see him looking at the hand. I'm almost sure that Maynard has had problems with that hand before. And it may just be a chronic thing. Vince Phillips suffers from the same yeah. type of thing. I know Maynard's had a lot of trouble with his ankles. Yes, he has. Let's play, that's my trainer, the uh, brain trust uh, of his and Sugar Ray Leonard, talking to him from outside the ring. All right, let's get the Michael Buffer. We'll get the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Carlos Padilla, acting on the advice of Dr. Wish Game, stops the bout at 2 minutes 59 seconds of the third round. The winner by TKO, his record now 10 and 0, 9 KOs, boxing, Andrew. From the fight you just saw between Kemper Norton and Andrew Maynard, Maynard winning it as they stop the fight on cuts in the third round. And as you can see, Maynard averaging well over. Hey, you want to know, we will find out, <laughs> believe me. And Andrew, uh, Barry was just talking about the fact that obviously your hand was hurt. You hit him on the top of the head, right? And it uh, hurt you? Yeah, when Pepe told me to oh, hold two jabs in the right hand. So I went through the motion, and just as I threw the right hand, he ducked just a little and it hit him right at the top of the forehead. And I said, Lord. I mean, all of a sudden, it just a shock wave went down my whole right side. Did it go numb? Kind it of? went numb. Yeah. And then Pepe said, throw it again. So I tried it, and I just couldn't get no feeling. So I just said, I'm going to move. And that's what I did. I moved. And you started using the left hook and the left jab uh, almost exclusively, and it worked for you. Yes, it did. You know, he was expecting me to be a good right-hand bomber. So, like I said, I added just a little bit more to my arsenal. I came with the left hook after the jab. Right, to the body, to the head. Pepe, uh, Andrew is a boxer who is kind of in between styles in a way. He's, you're trying to incorporate 
additional things into him, so he's not just a bomber. How's his progress coming in that area? Andrew's right on schedule, to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, this guy in the gym was looking awesome. I mean, he was moving, sliding, getting underneath for punches, and getting some good shots off. You know, I'm going to tell you something. You've seen a hell of a fight out there had it not been for the fact he hurt that right hand because he could have got him out there differently. Uh, Andrew, I'm completely satisfied with this kid. Come a long ways. Come a long way. He's not that bomber, that banger who stand there and get hit no more. Okay, well, but still got the power though. You showed that with your left hand today. Well, thank you very much. Uh, you know, the key was the fact was that he did when he did hurt the right hand, he had the patience to go with the jab, the left hooks, and put the right hands to the soft spots in the body. And yeah. this is what we've been working on. This kid is like a sponge. Everything I give him, he absorbs. All right, well, that's a good way to describe it. Uh -oh. Congratulations, good win. Thank Andrew. you. Thank you very much. All right, Andrew Maynard. Uh, well, he wasn't the sponge tonight because Kemper Morton absorbed. Speaking of today on our.